Jed Carlson is a junior at Hastings High School and will be a 2025 Raider graduate. During his time at Hastings High School, he has participated in basketball and soccer. Jed played basketball during his freshman year and has excelled in soccer each year in high school. During his freshman year, he played on the C-Squad and has been a varsity starter for the last three seasons and a captain during his junior year. Jed gives a great interview where he talks very highly of teammates that helped him improve in his leadership ability and coaches that have invested in his soccer skills and in his life. Here we are with Jed Carlson. Jed, I always start at the beginning of someone's life and the people I really like starting with lately are your parents. So let's hear about your family, especially your parents, who they are, where they're from, their names, their occupation, things of that nature. So once again, let's hear about your life growing up, especially your parents. All right. So my parents are Rick and Deb Carlson. My mom, her maiden name is Growth, Debbie Growth. I don't, you'd probably know her by that. We've always lived in Hastings. All right. They haven't always, but I have since growing up. They built a house out in the country. I have two older brothers, Jack and Joe Carlson. Jack graduated in 27, Joe graduated in 2019. And my parents both graduated from Hastings High School in 91. Right on. Not many people may know this, but your mom actually was on this podcast a long time ago. So Mr. Hansen, our AD, interviewed your mom. And I'm going to put that link here in some area here of your interview so people can go back and listen to your mom's interview because it was really good. And she was a stud athlete back in the day. Oh, yeah. Soccer, oh, yeah. gymnastics, anything else that did she do too at Hastings High School? I know those two for she sure. She ran track. Okay. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What about your dad? Did he play any sports growing up? I know my dad played baseball, but I'm not sure about much else. Okay. Right on. Next thing we always like hearing about is the schools you attended here in Hastings. You just said that you have always grown up here in Hastings. So let's hear about the schools you attended. I also like hearing about any teachers that had a really big impact on mm -hmm. at each grade level. You don't have to talk about every single teacher from every single year, but if you want to talk about someone that had a really big impact on you at the elementary level, middle, and high school, let's hear about those teachers. Yeah, so I went to Pinecrest Elementary School, and all of my elementary school teachers were amazing. They all really helped me develop into the person I am today. But I'd like to focus on Mr. Brenny, Mr. Tom Brenny. He was my kindergarten teacher, and he's been a family friend for a long time, also a soccer coach, and he is a really nice guy. I went to Hastings Middle School. And again, most of my teachers were very good teachers. They were very nice. And middle school was probably my least favorite out of elementary school, middle school, and high school. But one teacher that stands out is with Linkless Piney. She genuinely was the nicest lady. At the high school level, all of my teachers have been amazing. Especially Mr. Hanberg. There wasn't a time where I would walk in that class and I wouldn't have a smile on my face. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jed. Try to make health class kind of fun every once in a while, oh, yeah. you know, so oh, yeah. it's always a good time. <laughs> so I also like hearing about the sports you played growing up. We could stop somewhere maybe around that eighth, ninth grade level because it seems like the people I have on here, that's when sports get a little more serious for them and they start playing at an upper level, the JV, varsity level at an earlier age like that too. So let's hear about the sports you played growing up. So I've always been in soccer growing up. I played rec as a little kid and I, I played all the way up through traveling at HFC, which is Hastings, Cottage Grove, and then I'm going to play for Egan Wave next year. I also played Little Raiders football in fifth and sixth grade. I like to think I was a stud. I, it just sucks that soccer overlaps with football, so I'm not able to play football because I prefer soccer. And... Yeah, no, I played a year at C-Squad and sophomore year, I jumped up to the varsity level and that's where I've been since. Gotcha. That's the next thing I, I always like hearing about too, is we can go through every single year. Let's start in ninth grade then. Let's go through that season as well. If you did play any sports in the winter or the fall season, let's hear about those. If not, no worries at all. But let's hear about those seasons, especially your ninth grade year. You said you played at the C-Squad level and then anything that really sticks out from the year, any highs, any lows that you want to talk about, anything that really, once again, really sticks out in your memory that was a, a highlight from that year. And then let's go to 10th grade and then we'll come to 11th grade too. So talk about all the seasons you played here at Hastings High School for soccer. All right. So ninth grade, I also left out, I played basketball. I, I tried it for one year because I had always been playing it with my friends outside of school. I tried it for one year and I had a good time with some friends. It wasn't really the most serious, but I really enjoyed it. 
my freshman year for soccer, it was my first year in the program. It was really cool seeing all the, even the seniors and the varsity squad looking up to them. And I had uh, Tom Brenia as my C squad coach that year. He really helped me become the player I am today. And I thank him for that. But that year was mainly just having fun with a bunch of my friends and we scored a lot of goals that season. And one, one big memory from that year is we scrimmaged the varsity team and our freshman team beat them scrimmage. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you have any yeah. goals that game or no? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I had one. Okay. Did you ever get to play with any of your brothers or no, they're a lot older than you? No, I never got to play with them other than in the alumni game, I play against them and I'm looking forward to the year after I graduate when I can play on the same team as them. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. So then we roll right into 10th grade. Let's hear about that season. Okay. So 10th grade, it was my first year on varsity. It was really cool stepping up on the Todd field with the new turf that they put in. It was, it was a massive step up. I was probably one of the smaller kids out there every game, but I, I felt like I put in the work ethic and I, I was really using my body where I could stand a chance out there. I believe I was tied for the highest goals on my sophomore year. And I was playing with some seniors that I, I really liked and I could look up to as role models. So that was awesome. Brenner, Kateria Piney and Ethan Claren, along with Austin Miller. Those guys all stood out a lot. They really helped me. Nice. And then 11th grade, here we are. Let's hear about this season so far. We're probably a little bit over halfway into the season right now. So if you want to talk about the season, and then if you also want to talk about maybe a future goal for the season as well, where you see the rest of the season going and then the postseason as well. Yeah. So our season started off, we started off gunning. We won our first two games and big comeback wins. They were really fun games. And then since then, it's been downhill because we haven't won a game since those first two and things feel like they're falling apart, but there's still some positive things in every game that we can look at because we're still, we're scoring a lot, but we just got to figure out our situation. It's been really cool stepping into the position where I feel like the role model as opposed to the person looking up because I, there are definitely some younger guys on the team that I feel like I can give advice and help them become better people and players. What do you think got you ready for that leadership position? Do you think it was maybe some people growing up that really helped you mold you into that kind of leader? Was it the older guys that you looked up to when you were the young sophomore on the team that you're trying to model those behaviors? Or maybe it was something else going on in your life too that really helped you step up and be a leader. So what do you think that would be for you? I would say it's a mix of all of those things. I've always looked up to both of my brothers and the way they help and guide me and the way I learn from the things that they do is the way I want to be able to teach the guys that are younger than me, if that makes sense. For sure. That's pretty awesome. So think about you right now, you play soccer, you have played basketball, played a couple other sports growing up as well. Why do you think sports is important to you? And why have you gotten into sports and played such an important role in your life? Um, sports really, they, they give you a place to leave the everyday life of school and you can just relax and feel like you're in a safe space and do the thing you love. One of the main reasons I play soccer is for the love of the game, because it's just, it's so much fun to step out there and play. Perfect. You talked about scrimmaging the varsity team when you were a freshman mm -hmm. and beating them. And you talked about the alumni game playing against your brother. So two really cool moments so far as an athlete here at Hastings High School. Anything else that really sticks out as maybe a favorite memory so far? So my personal favorite memory is we played Tartan my sophomore season away. And I scored a, a crazy goal in front of the net. It was my first varsity goal. And Bruce Carnick, the photographer, got a perfect picture of it and ended up, ended up being in the paper. And that was just a very cool memory for me to have my first varsity goal documented like that in such a cool game that we ended up winning. Mm -hmm. My favorite team memory is the two comebacks we had this season. We were down three to zero at halftime away in our first game of the season against Eastview. And we ended up coming back, winning that four to three with some crazy goals from my teammates and myself as well. And then the next game we played, we did the same thing in, at Todd Field, but it was a three to two win. Gotcha. And if people have not seen it, I think that's a Jefferson game where you just had a insanely crazy goal. And if you want to talk about that, I don't know how you did that because I don't think I could have thrown the ball into the net from there, but somehow you kicked the ball and bent it in a way that it just went perfectly in the goal. So. Talk about that goal and maybe how you did it. And then obviously it got a lot of recognition, just like that first picture of your first goal too. So 
Talk about what that was like for you. Yeah, I appreciate the compliment. Really, it was just in the instinct of the moment. The whole football team was sitting there watching, and the ball bounced to me in a certain way where I could hit it with the outside of my foot. Soccer players would probably know that that's called a travella. So I travelled it up, and it landed top left corner past the goalie's head. It was more of a chip shot, and it was honestly one of the best goals I've ever scored in my life, and it couldn't have been at a better time. Oh, that's sweet. Kind of along the same lines. I know we like hearing about success here on the Raiders on the Record podcast, and we've had so many different athletes on here. They've all given their definition of success and what success means to them. So we always like turning that around on the guest here, asking them about success and how they define it. So Jed, how would you define success? I see success personally as being able to have fun and relax and be confident and at ease in the sport that you're playing. And also doing it with a team that can build you up while you build them up as well. It's a mutual relationship. That's perfect. I know you're only a junior right now. I'm guessing you want to play soccer at the next level. Um, Have you thought about that? Are you looking anywhere? I know maybe in the rapid fire you talked about wanting to go to the next level and play in college, but really had no clue what to do yet. So, or where to go or what Mm -hmm. you want to do either. So. Talk about the next level, if you're looking to play, where you're looking to play, and anything that goes along with that. Yeah, I'd, I'd really love to play co- or to play soccer at any level above, and, but I would definitely put education first, personally. If there's something that I'm really, a really cool opportunity and I can play soccer along with that, that's mainly when I would play soccer at the higher level. But I'm always going to be looking for a Sunday league team that I can play against regardless. <laughs> so no matter what, soccer is not leaving your life. For sure. That's great. So you talked about Mr. Brenny earlier having a big impact on you in kindergarten and then coaching, get, getting the opportunity to coach you again here as a ninth grader. So I always like hearing about the best coach. That's what we say, the best coach, but we could define that best coach in many different ways. So let's hear about someone that really sticks out in your life as a best coach. If it's Mr. Brenny, you can talk about it a little more. If there's another coach that really sticks out in your life, or if you want to talk about multiple coaches, you can go for it, Jets. Who do you think that best coach would be in your life? So I do have two coaches that come to mind here. The one coach is Mr. Brandy from my freshman season because he really taught me the values of respect and honor on the field and off the field. And I would say he's the best coach I've ever had to build me up as an individual. And for, for technical and strategy-wise, the best coach I've ever had was definitely Tim Slabnitcher. He's a parent of Micah Slapnitcher here at the high school. And he really helped me build my technique up and build my actual skills in the game. Perfect. Now we'd like to focus on the guys that you're playing with on the soccer field. You named a couple older guys like Ethan Claren and a couple guys too that really helped you out when you were a young sophomore onto that varsity field. And now the role is you're the leader on the, on the soccer field. So it's pretty cool how that turns around like that. But let's talk about the best teammate that you've had. And once again, you could define this in many different ways. Uh, so I'll let you define it and talk about the best teammate you've played with. So who would that be in your life? Uh, this one was a pretty easy answer for me. It's Sebastian Strauss. Everyone knows him as Seabass. I've been playing soccer and I've been a best friend with him ever since we were little. We met at a church family camp and we've always been playing soccer together and boosting each other up. He's playing even at a higher level in the traveling season right now, but he's my teammate on the varsity team. And he has always pushed me and I've pushed him. And I feel like if any of my teammates are going to go pro, it's going to be him. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's one way that I've always defined it too. I've defined best teammate in a couple different ways a lot of times on this podcast. But one of the ways I always think about is that person that might be the same age and always pushes you and elevates your level. So that's pretty cool that Seabass is one of those kids that you grew up with and you're just constantly raising each other's level. So pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I always like this one, Jed, too, because it changes from year to year. It changes from sport to sport, changes from our old alumni to the people that are in high school now. So we always like hearing about a particular opponent or for you guys, it would be an opponent for someone that's like in track. It might be an event or something like Mm -hmm. that. So who's an opponent that you guys always look forward to playing every single season? You circle it, you highlight it in red, and uh, you always think that it might bring the best out in you guys. So who do you think that would be for you when it comes to soccer? The team that really stands out to me is playing against Park. Because for traveling, I, I went over to Cottage Grove and I, I played with a bunch of guys that were in that area. And a lot of them are on that park team right now. And facing up against them, they're doing very well this year. We just played them and lost them actually. But that one, that one is always going to be a big battle because I, I know those guys very well, even the parents of the players there too. And 
it, it's looking like we're lined up to play them in sections too. So that'll be a big game if we play against them there. Yeah, it's funny you say park because that's always the one that really sticks out from back in the day when it's football or wrestling or kind of any other sport too, maybe baseball as well. That Highway 61 rivalry with Park is always a big one. And people growing up always had it. I feel like it's gone away in your, in recent years, but it's fun to hear that, that that's a big rival for you when it comes oh, yeah. to soccer. Oh, yeah. Last kind of question before we get on to our last ones. Talk about your improvement process as well. You talked about playing travel soccer up in Cottage Grove. Name anything else that you've gone into. It could be weight training. It could be um, a workout facility. Anything else that goes into your improvement process, especially when it comes to soccer. Yeah, so I, the last two years, I was in the program called Spark at the high school that you, you helped run as well. That helped me a lot. I ended up not doing it this year because I wanted to focus on different ways to train. But that's one way. Another way I like to get better is by being very coachable and listening to the, the coaches that I respect a lot because they can really help your game a lot, even peers as well. Being very coachable and applying that to your game will do a lot. And one model that I learned from, it, I, it's, I've heard it a lot growing up, but it was just get 1% better every day. I don't think anyone's ever talked about that before when it comes to an improvement process, just being coachable and having a good work ethic, which definitely comes into it. So I think we always hear about weightlifting and off-season training and things like that, but just going in there and listening to your coaches and being coachable and doing what they say, I think that has a lot to do with the improvement process. So that's really neat that you named that. And you recognize it, that it's had a huge impact on your life. Yeah, it really does go a long way because you learn a lot from the people that are experienced. Perfect. Jed, that's all the questions I got before we wrap up here. Anything else you want to talk about uh, when it comes to high school, soccer, any other sports you played, uh, your time so far here in Hastings? Like I said, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up with our last couple questions? Are the last couple questions the take two ones? Yep. Okay. Nothing I wouldn't say in the take two. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So then our last couple of ones, we always look for advice for parents, coaches, and student athletes. So the first group we always focus on are parents and coaches. So thinking about your time here at Hastings, you're only a junior right now, but thinking about your time in Hastings, playing soccer, playing at a varsity level last couple of years, if you had to give advice for parents and coaches, what would it be? So first, my advice for parents would be support your kids with whatever they're interested in and passionate with. Because my parents have always been for me and supported me through my soccer playing in my life. And I just feel if every kid had that in their life where they're supported and helped with whatever they need for what they're passionate about, that would help so many people reach heights that they wouldn't normally achieve. Advice I have for coaches is there's, there's always a difference between the coaches that don't go above and beyond and the ones that do. So my advice would be the coach that goes above and beyond with both game strategy and helping kids build good moral value. I love that. Last group then is the student athletes. And these could be the little kids coming to watch you tonight, play soccer on the soccer field when, or other student athletes that maybe those juniors or maybe the freshmen and the sophomores that are looking up to the varsity team as well. So if you had to give advice for student athletes, what do you think it would be? I have two little pieces for the younger athletes. My first one would be play with confidence in whatever sport you're playing. That will go a long way and it'll help you be a lot more comfortable on the field. And my other piece of advice is to leave it all out there while you can, because you're only going to have these seasons for the, these three, four years, however long you're at the level you're at. You really don't want to, you don't want to look back at this and feel like you could have done more. That is perfect. Jed, once again, that's all the questions I got for you tonight. The last thing we always do though, is turn the microphone over to our guest. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Any shout outs you want to give? Like I said, the microphone is yours and you can go for it. I don't know. I uh, Shout out to my friends. Like they're playing really well in football right now. My friend Cole Zion, Lucas Foss, Jack Cloutier. They're having big nights on the varsity squad. Yeah, I'm just really supporting all the athletes out there at Hastings High School. They're doing it now. Perfect. Thanks, Jed. Yeah, thank you.